Welcome to a video entitled Configuring Forwarders. Now what is forwarding? We're talking about DNS forwarding and you'll also hear the term conditional forwarding, you hear the term forwarder, they're all talking about the same thing and that is we are directing DNS to a particular location to get whatever information we're looking for. Now forwarding happens all the time with DNS. Whenever it can't solve a request, then it forwards that request to another DNS server. It's kind of the same thing as me driving into downtown Nashville, rolling down the window, asking someone, hey, how do I get to the stadium where the Dallas Cowboys play? They're going to do one of two things. They're going to tell me, well, you can go to Chicago and ask them up there. There's a lot of football fans there. They can tell you. And so I drive to Chicago and say, uh, where do the Cowboys play? And they say, well, go to Dallas and ask somebody there. Well, I've made a trip to Chicago I didn't need to make. Now, if the guy in Nashville had been a forwarder, he would have said, okay, wait a minute, Dallas, just drive straight to Dallas and ask somebody over there. Now, a lot of times when your DNS server doesn't have the ability to answer, it will forward out to a root server on the Internet. And we're going to talk about root hints a little bit later and how to control some of these. But that root server out on the Internet has the addresses of like .com, .info, .net servers. And so if I'm looking for something .com, it'll refer me to the root server. It will then point me to the .com server, and I can kind of step through it that way. But here is the dirty little secret. You can determine where certain requests are forwarded. You don't have to go to the root server. You can designate a server as a forwarder and tell it which request to send to a specific authoritative server. Now, there is a difference between just straight up forwarding and conditional forwarding, and I'll show you that in just a few minutes. So how do we configure this? In the DNS management tool, you can right click the DNS server that you want to work with and choose properties then choose the Forwarders tab. Now, let's look at Forwarding in Action, then I'll go out to the tool and show it to you. I'm in marklong.com and I'm trying to reach vtc.com. So I type in vtc.com, it goes to my local DNS server, and DNS server says, I don't know where vtc.com is, let me connect you to a root name server. So it sends me to a root name server, it sends it back, and it says, here's the IP address for the com name server people. Ask them. I'm then connected to the com name server. Do you have an IP address for vtc.com? And they say, yes, here it is. Now I have to go to vtc.com, get the address, it's returned to me, and then I can connect. Now there was a lot of movement to a root name server, to the com name server. And if I already know that a lot of my clients and my network are going to be connecting to vtc.com, I should set up a forwarder. This time, we type uh, vtc.com in our browser from marklong.com, and we have configured our DNS server to forward to vtc.com. And instead of doing the root name server and the com and so forth, it goes straight to vtc.com, it sends back the IP address, the client gets it, and then they can connect to the machine. So there's a lot of flexibility here let me just jump out into the DNS management tool. So you'll notice here I am in Server Manager and I'm on the Local Server tab. I will go to Tools right up here in the upper right. Then I'll go down to DNS. And then you'll notice that if I right click on the server level and go down to Properties, there is a Forwarders tab. And I can tell it, if you're having trouble, forward to this server. Now, a lot of people will do this inside a private network to forward outside, that sort of thing. And so it's very easy to use and use root hints down here if no forwarders are available. So we can play with that. But as for now, anytime I can't find anything, it's going to jump out to here. So I'm going to cancel that. Then you'll notice conditional forwarders. I can right click and choose a new conditional forwarder. And I can put in a domain, an IP address, a server fully qualified domain name, and then I can store this in Active Directory. But this starts to get kind of conditional. Uh, I will jump out to root if I don't have anything in here, and I can put multiples in here for the master servers, and I can put a list here of vtc.com and the IP address for it. 
and so forth. So this will conditionally forward based on exactly what I'm looking for, the fully qualified domain name, www.vtc.com, or I can set up a forward, a server as a forwarder by going to properties by right clicking on that server itself and going to the forwarders tab. So there's a couple of ways to go about it. The bottom line is it does the same thing. It will give you shortcuts in your DNS. It makes it a lot faster and a lot more efficient. And for the end user, it just looks like faster response and everybody's happy.